YouTube, I'm the Foam Witch and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the staff mask from the awesome Squid Game, so let's get to it. So in the last video I upgraded my microphone, in this video I've upgraded my camera, so if you think the quality is better let me know in the comments. So to start I had to go about making a template and I've got this mannequin head which is pretty much the same size as my head which is really handy and I first covered it in a layer of cling film and then I covered it in a few layers of masking tape. I then took a sharpie and drew out what I thought looked right. It's quite an easy shape to make so it was only three segments of a template but that was only for half of the mask so obviously once they'd cut out you'd duplicate them and get six pieces. So this is me just cutting those pieces off of the mannequin head. I just used my craft knife for this and as you can see I only cut out half and that was just to save a little bit of time on cutting out multiple pieces when they're going to be mirrored anyway. And then I just cut it down into the segments. I then thought that I might like to use these templates again for another project so I'm going to transfer them to a bit of paper just so I can make them a bit more suitable to use in the future. If I tidy them up a bit I went round them with a sharpie and then it was time to cut them out. And now that those were done, it's time to get to the main part of any foam build and it's transferring them to the foam. So placing each section of the template onto the foam, I draw around each of them. Then I flip them over and draw around them again and that's what will give you both halves of the helmet. Now because this mask was quite small, I did manage to use a lot of my scrap foam which was quite good for this build. So if you don't have a lot of foam but still want to make this mask, I'm pretty sure you're still going to be able to do it. So now it's just a case of cutting these pieces out and for the most part I used straight cuts apart from on the curve of the little D section where I did an inward bevel cut. Because this mask is round and foam is obviously flat, it's just going to need a little bit of help to get into a round shape. So to help with this, I just heated up the two outer D sections, which are kind of like the cheek parts, and just rounded them off a little bit so that they sat properly when they were glued together. And now is the time to glue them together, so I grab my contact adhesive, put it on each side of the foam piece, wait for it to dry, and then stick them all together. Now I'm sticking the pieces together, now the contact adhesive is touch dry, and I made some little registration marks just so I know how to line up the pieces perfectly. I don't know why I didn't add glue to all of the pieces at the same time so they dried at the same time, but I didn't, so here I am adding some more glue, because I like to take the long winded approach. Waiting for contact adhesive to dry is the perfect time to check my phone, usually my Instagram if you'd like to go and follow me at the phone witch, or to play a bit of Marvel Strike Force which is what I'm doing here. Now to stick these pieces together and then it's time to tackle the dreaded centre part. Now as is usual with my builds, if I was to build it again, I definitely wouldn't do it this way. I'd stick the middle sections together first and work outwards, but here we are. Now I just take my Dremel and round off any of the harsh edges of the seam lines. This will help to sand back any high spots, but will also help to smooth out the dome shape that the mask has. If after doing this you still have visible seam lines, you can spend a bit of time filling them in with some filler or some foam clay. I didn't on this, mainly because you couldn't really see them. And I'm lazy. What I did do to smooth it down a little bit more was to take some fine grit sandpaper and just give it a once over with a wet sand. It's not a foam witch video without a thumbs up. So now it's time to work on the detail that this mask has. It has a horizontal band going across the middle of the mask and a vertical line going down obviously vertically and that has two lines on that also. That doesn't really make much sense so you might just want to go and look at a picture of it. So all of the thin strips I cut out were a centimetre in width and for the vertical line down the centre I cut a 3.5 centimetre strip and then put two one centimetre strips on top of that leaving a five millimetre gap in the middle. That's a lot of numbers so I hope that makes sense. Before sticking any of these pieces down I would put them in place with pins to check they were in the right position, then I would draw around them so I knew where the contact adhesive needed to go before sticking them down. Also just because I haven't said, these were cut out of mainly 3mm foam but the two middle sections on the centre band, again that doesn't really make much sense but you'll kind of understand what I mean, was out of 2mm foam. It also has a band that goes around the whole edge of the mask and that's the part that I'm doing now. I made these strips one centimetre width 
have to think about that because it's even confusing me now and it was three millimeter thick foam hopefully that's the last time I'm going to mention any numbers in this video because I can't do it anymore now that the confusing part is out the way it now comes to the tedious part so these masks in Squid Game are kind of like a mesh material so have lots of little holes over them obviously foam does not have holes in so I had to drill loads and loads of little holes into the front of this mask to do this I used my Dremel with the drill bit attachment and I kind of just winged it and freehanded it they did start to go really wonky which I will show you I should have probably plotted them out beforehand and followed the guide but these are kind of the only risks I'll take in life so let me live on the edge a little I will say that this did take what felt like forever and I did start to lose the will to live towards the end but I'm glad I did it because it wouldn't really have looked right if I hadn't have done and here's a closer look as you can see as I said a few of the dots did go a little bit wonky but overall they're not too bad because this spray is black this is also going to be used as the paint so I don't have to do any extra painting now it needs a symbol on the front and I decided to go with the square mainly because I thought it was the hardest one and I wasn't sure how it was going to work and I wanted to try and challenge myself it was really faffy to do because obviously putting a square on a round surface is not easy it did take a lot of faffing but I think I got it all right in the end I plotted where the square was going to go with masking tape and once I was happy with the placement I used my pencil to trace an outline that left a very faint line and then the masking tape was peeled off leaving just the outline so I could then stick it back on again around that square so I knew where the paint was going to go. I applied the paint with a sponge, I used three layers of this paint to get really good coverage and in between layers I used my super handy hair dryer on a low heat setting just to help the paint dry really quickly which it did then it was just a case of peeling off the masking tape and the mask was complete and there we have it that's how I made my version of the staff mask from squid game I want to take the time to say a huge thank you for watching this video if you've liked it please give it a thumbs up if you like content like this it would really mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to my channel that would be incredible and if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see on this channel just leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do so again thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time mm -hmm.